Our homes are flattened. Our buildings roofless. Our water pipes smashed and road infrastructure destroyed. The desolation is beyond imagination. Mr. President, fellow leaders, the stars have fallen. Eden is broken. Loss and damage. These words tell the story of climate change in the Caribbean. Rising sea levels, extreme flooding, and record-breaking hurricanes are some of the climate-induced events driving this narrative. While the whole world is now beginning to share in these devastating impacts and more, the climate suffering for small island states in the Caribbean has already hit critical levels. So the storms are now more intense and more frequent. What we have seen in the last five years is that we have been getting a number of Category 5 hurricanes, you know, Dorian, you know, being a, a, a standout one in the Bahamas, where, you know, the, the, the islands were decimated as a result of that. You know, the 2017 hurricane season with Hurricane Irma, you know, significant damage in the billions of dollars, you know, in a number of countries. So we are seeing more frequent storms, more intense storms. Leaders in the region have been unified in their calls for global assistance in addressing loss and damage. Their goal? A dedicated fund created through the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change that would allow developing countries access to emergency financing. My friends, we heard the calls and we responded. Today, here in Sharm el-Sheikh, we established the first ever dedicated fund for loss and damage, a fund that has been so long in the making. Since many Caribbean islands are classified as middle income, it is sometimes difficult for them to access emergency funding reserved for the world's poorest nations. But as small island states, they face a harsh reality. When you have a large storm system, you tend to find that the, the, the whole island, a whole island might be blanketed so that there's no escape so a section of the island which can help the other part that is damaged. So the whole island is damaged. Unlike now, in like in, in the United States, if you tell, if Florida gets damaged, then you know, you're probably likely that the storm might not reach up to New York, you know, or, or in some cases to Alabama or Pennsylvania. So the other states which are undamaged, damaged, in the United States can help out the, those that have, have been affected, but usually in the small island states, we don't have that. For small island developing states to survive economic shocks and recover lost and damaged infrastructure, they are forced to borrow, only to be confronted again in a few years with another round of natural disasters. The situation is only going to get worse for Caribbean islands as some of the world's largest emitters fall short of their targets to help limit global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. Together, all the small island developing states of the world are responsible for less than 1% of global greenhouse gas emissions driving climate change. While the G20 bloc a collection of 20 of the world's largest economies are responsible for 80%. There's a hesitancy to see it as liability or, repar or reparations or damages, you know, because um, then we get into accountability, liability, litigation, things like that. And, you know, they don't want the floodgates to open. The fund, as it is right now, cannot do anything. There is no money in it. It needs to be operationalized. The fund must have certain guidelines. It must be, it, it must be very clear, you know, what it's for, and it must be the, the disbursement mechanism and the, 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 way you, the way you are able to access the fund must be relatively easy. But if COP27 taught us anything, it is that there are reasons to be optimistic. Change can happen when least expected. There are those that are going forward further and faster than everyone else. These are examples that must be followed. 
There are those who just need a nudge into taking further action, to go beyond business as usual. There are others who need support so they are able to do the things they need to do for their countries and communities, specifically highly vulnerable nations. And then there are those who still refuse to act unless others do. They will not be allowed to slow down the collective process. Let's not let positioning block progress. All of us have to do everything we are capable of doing.